Hello, friends. Steve Stockton here with you. Welcome to our latest episode. In the beautiful landscape of Kentucky's rolling hills and dense forests, there exists a location of fascination and marvel. Mammoth Cave is a natural wonder that has captivated people for centuries. The cave is a maze of intricate tunnels and grand chambers that seem to bring the earth to life. As you journey deeper into the cave, you'll feel transported to another realm. The air grows colder and the outside world sounds fade into the darkness. It's a place that makes you feel humble and fills you with a sense of admiration and enchantment. In this video, we'll explore Mammoth Cave's extensive history and some alleged paranormal encounters. Join me. Let's walk and see. Now, researchers have dated Mammoth Cave's rock beds to the Mississippian period, approximately 320 to 360 million years ago. However, the passages of Mammoth Cave did not start forming until about 10 or 15 million years ago during the Miocene epoch, when streams and rivers flowing over the surface allowed water to sink in and enter the rock beds through small cracks. At this time, the region was covered by a shallow sea, and sediment was deposited on the sea floor. Over time, the sediment was compressed and hardened into limestone. The area underwent uplift around two and a half million years ago, exposing the limestone to the surface. Rainwater, slightly acidic due to carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, began to dissolve the limestone, creating tiny cracks and fissures in the rock. Over time, these small cracks and fissures grew into more extensive passages as water flowed through the limestone, creating even more significant passages as they grew. This process is known as karstification. The cave system has many breathtaking geological formations, including stalactites and stalagmites. These formations are created over time as minerals like calcium carbonate accumulate from the water dripping from the cave's ceiling. The distinctive shapes of the cave are a testament to nature's incredible power and beauty. Some formations are so massive that they dwarf you, while others are small and fragile. As you delve deeper into the cave, you'll encounter many vast chambers. The rotunda is particularly impressive, with an enormous ceiling that seems to stretch on forever. Another noteworthy area is Gothic Avenue, where tall and narrow passageways branch into darkness, resembling the spokes of a wheel. Yet another impressive sight is the frozen Niagara Formation, which looks like a frozen waterfall. Delicate white strands cascade down the walls, creating a breathtaking sight. Yet another stunning formation is Crystal Lake, a shallow pool of turquoise water that reflects the surrounding formations like a mirror. Visiting Mammoth Cave National Park and Mammoth Cave itself offers a unique opportunity to explore a hidden world filled with rare and fascinating life forms, some exclusive to this location. Since the cave's entrances are few and far between, the animals that live inside have been cut off from the rest of the world for thousands of years. You'll spot bats hanging from the ceiling tightly folding their wings around their bodies as they rest. In the underground rivers, blind cavefish swim with their white bodies almost glowing in the darkness. While the cave's fragile ecosystem requires visitors to take special precautions to avoid damaging the delicate environment, the chance to witness these amazing creatures in their natural habitat is an experience that is sure to leave a lasting impression. Mammoth Cave is also Kentucky's only national park. The surrounding forest contains one of the most diverse habitats in the nation, supporting more than 1,300 flowering species and bird species, like bald eagles, wood warblers, and thrushes. You can see flowers along the hiking trails and along the 60 miles open for horseback riding. The park also includes over 30 miles of the Green and Nolan Rivers, which are great fishing spots, and scenic kayak and canoe trails. Mammoth Cave is also a place of historical and cultural significance. The history of human presence at Mammoth Cave extends back at least six millennia. Over the years, some Native Americans have been unearthed from Mammoth Cave and other nearby caves, with several discoveries made during the 19th and 20th centuries. Most of the remains found appear to have been deliberately buried. Apart from the discovered remains and the section of Mammoth Cave accessible via the historic entrance, Various artifacts such as cane torches, drawings, 
gourd fragments, and woven grass moccasin slippers have been found in the Salts Cave section located at Flint Ridge. These discoveries provide evidence of Native Americans' use of the cave in the past, but there is no indications of any usage after the archaic period. This baffles experts and scientists as to why this is so, and it remains one of the most significant mysteries of Mammoth Cave. Legend has it that Mammoth Cave was discovered in 1797 by either John Houchin or his brother, Francis Houchin. The story goes that while hunting, Houchin chased a wounded bear to the cave's opening near the Green River. Some accounts credit John Decatur, Johnny Dick Houchin, John Houchin's son, with the discovery. But this seems unlikely, as he would have only been 10 years old, and unlikely to be out hunting bear at such a young age. It's more plausible that John's father was the discoverer from that family branch. However, the most likely candidate for the discovery of Mammoth Cave is Francis Frank Houchin, as his land was much closer to the cave entrance than that of his brother John. In 1798, the land where the historic entrance was located came under the ownership of Valentine Simmons, and ownership changed hands many times over the next several years. Simmons proceeded to extract saltpeter from the cave. In 1799, Simmons sold 200 acres in two caves to John Flatt. The larger cave came to be known as Flatt's Cave. Flatt then sold the property to John McLean and his two brothers. In 1808, the McLean brothers sold Flats Cave to Fleming Gatewood and Charles Wilkins. In 1810, the first published use of the name Mammoth Cave was used in a Richmond, Virginia newspaper. During the War of 1812, the saltpeter reserves in the cave became crucial to the American military due to the British blockade of U.S. ports. As a result, the price of saltpeter rose domestically, making the production of nitrates from caves like Mammoth Cave highly profitable. Enslaved men mined vast amounts of saltpeter and sent it to gunpowder factories in the East to supply American military war efforts. After the war ended and the demand for saltpeter declined, the mining operations ceased. The cave became a minor tourist attraction, focusing on a nearby discovery of a Native American mummy. In August of 1812, Gatewood sold his interest in Mammoth Cave to Hyman Gratz of Philadelphia for $10,000 after Charles Wilkins passed away. Later, in 1838, Franklin Gorin and A. A. Harvey bought Mammoth Cave and 1,600 acres from Hyman Gratz and his brother Simon. Gorin then enlarged and improved the Mammoth Cave Inn with Archibald Miller, Jr. as the manager. Gorin owned enslaved persons and used them as tour guides. One of Gorin's enslaved persons, Stephen Bishop, affectionately known as the Sable Genius, contributed to understanding the cave, and is now recognized as one of its most renowned historical figures. Bishop guided visitors through the 1840s and 1850s and played a crucial role in mapping the cave and naming its features. His contributions of the human knowledge of Mammoth Cave are extraordinary. Gorin sold the cave in 1610 acres to Dr. John Krogan in 1839. During that time, the medical understanding and treatments for tuberculosis also known as the White Plague, were minimal. This disease was one of the primary causes of death during the 19th and early 20th centuries. Dr. Krogan saw potential in the cave as a possible sanitarium for treating this disease. Dr. Krogan found that visitors and miners had previously reported feeling better after exploring the cave. Horace Carter Hovey even mentioned that the fresh air in the cave could help sustain a person on a long hike without causing fatigue. Moreover. Dr. Krogan noticed that the cave's environment prevented the decay of timber and animal carcasses. He hoped to use this environment to treat tuberculosis patients and established a hospital within the cave for experimental treatment. During the winter of 1842, Dr. Krogan invited 16 of his tuberculosis patients to reside in the cave hospital. To accommodate the patients, enslaved individuals constructed several buildings consisting of two stone cabins and eight basic wooden structures. These structures measured 12 by 18 feet and had tongue and groove flooring along with canvas roofs. Due to their isolation from natural light, the patients residing underground in the cave had to adapt their daily routines to coincide with those of the outside world. At first, the patients appeared to exhibit improvement while living in the cave, prompting Dr. Krogan to strategize the construction of a hotel to cater to the anticipated rise in visitors seeking therapeutic treatment. 
As winter continued, it became apparent that the patient's symptoms worsened due to the damp and dark conditions. Lard oil lanterns and a constant fire used to light the cave caused smoke and ash to fill the chambers, further damaging already weakened lungs. Cedar trees and bushes brought into light in the atmosphere quickly withered. While some cooking was completed within the cave, other meals were prepared off-site by enslaved individuals and brought into the cave. A server named Alfred noted, quote, I used to stand on that rock and blow the horn to call them to dinner. There were 15 of them, and they looked more like a company of skeletons than anything else, end quote. While Dr. Krogan conducted his medical experiment, the cave system was improved and public tours continued. Visitors occasionally came across patients in hospital gowns walking along the passages or heard echoing coughs in the distance without realizing what was occurring. In a letter, patient H.P. Anderson wrote, quote, There are many things to be done to render this place entirely pleasant and to give its virtues a fair test. We are pioneers under all the disadvantages of such, and after, generations will reap benefits of our experiments. End quote. As complaints and requests to leave arose, Anderson was the only individual to return to the surface, while Dr. Krogan convinced the remaining patients to stay. As the weeks wore on, five patients died inside the cave, their bodies laid out on what is now known as Corpse Rock. Dr. Krogan despondently returned to the surface with the remaining survivors. The experiment was not repeated, and the wood frame huts were dismantled, while the two stone cottages remain along Broadway within the Mammoth Cave Historic District. The experiment lasted no more than five months, from autumn 1842 to early 1843. While the cool cave settings conformed to the treatment standards of the times, the unventilated, damp environment actually worsened the disease. Like his patients, Dr. Krogan ultimately passed of tuberculosis in 1849. In 1859, the Louisville and Nashville Railroad established their main line that linked the two cities. During that period, Colonel Larkin J. Proctor owned the Mammoth Cave Estate and controlled the stagecoach route from Glasgow Junction, also known as Park City, to the Mammoth Cave Estate. The stagecoach route was the primary mode of transportation for tourists visiting the Mammoth Caves until 1886 when Proctor founded the Mammoth Cave Railroad. That takes us up to the Kentucky Cave Wars era. Smaller cave owners in the unproductive caves region saw the tourist traffic at Mammoth Cave and decided to compete for visitors. This led to the Kentucky Cave Wars, which were unethical tactics that diverted visitors from Mammoth Cave to their private show caves. Tourists were misled by signs and cappers from other show caves who convinced them that Mammoth Cave was closed or inaccessible. In 1906, a lock and dam were built at Brownsville, Kentucky, enabling steamboat access to Mammoth Cave. Max Camper, a technical college graduate from Germany, arrived in 1909 and collaborated with Ed Bishop to survey the cave and its surface area, leading to several discoveries and new entrances. The Krogan family hid the topographical details on Camper's map. The cave cartography section, however, is still recognized as an accurate representation of the cave. It was only during the modern exploration period in the 1960s that the passages were mapped more precisely. Camper left the Mammoth Cave area and was not heard from again. It was not until the early 21st century that a group of German tourists uncovered Camper's fate. After extensive research, they discovered that Camper had died during World War I and the Battle of the Somme in 1916. In 1912, renowned French cave explorer Edouard Alfred Martel used altitudes obtained from aneroid barometer readings to draw longitudinal sections of the cave as part of his attempts to understand the sequence of its formation. He also noted the correlation between the levels of Echo and Green River. A complete hydrologic study was not possible due to a dam, but Martel described the hydrogeologic features of Mammoth Cave and speculated it was linked to other caves. This hypothesis would be proven correct 60 years later. In the 1920s, George Morrison utilized explosives to create additional entrances to Mammoth Cave on land not owned by the Krogan Estate. The Krogans had been exhibiting sections of the cave that were not on their property, as the survey data from Camper, Bishop, and others was not accessible to the public. As a result, legal disputes arose and multiple instances to the cave were established. American cave explorer Floyd Collins 
explored the Flint Ridge Cave system for a decade. His most notable discovery was Crystal Cave, and he also explored Salts Cave. Collins hoped to find another entrance to Mammoth Cave, or possibly an unknown cave along the road to Mammoth Cave, and draw more visitors to drive profits. He made an agreement with three farmers who owned land near the main highway. They would form a business partnership if he found a cave and share the responsibilities of operating the tourist attraction. Within three weeks, working on his own, Collins explored and expanded a hole that would later be called Sand Cave by the news media. Tragically, Collins died in 1925 while exploring Sand Cave after he became trapped and could not free himself after a 27-pound rock dislodged onto his leg in a narrow crawlway. Despite rescue efforts, he eventually died of thirst and starvation. Oh, come all you young people and listen while I tell The feet of Chloe Collins, the lad we all knew well His face was fair and handsome, his heart was true and brave His body now lies sleeping in a lonely sandstone cave the rescue party labored, they worked both night and day To move the mighty bears that lay within the way To save Flowey Collins, this was their battle cry We'll never know, we'll never let Flowey Collins die But on that fatal morning, the sun rose in the sky the workers were still busy, we'll save him by and by. But oh, how sad the ending, his life they could not save. His body then was sleeping in the lonely sandstone cave. The attempts to save Collins gained widespread media attention leading prominent individuals in Kentucky to advocate for the creation of Mammoth Cave National Park. This movement eventually succeeded, and the National Park was established on July 1, 1941. Lloyd's body was displayed at various locations for tourism purposes, before it finally being buried in the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church Cemetery. Throughout the mid-19th century, African-American cave guides played a crucial role in the history of Mammoth Cave, even when slavery was still legal in the United States. This was because Mammoth Cave was a well-known tourist attraction, and thus, enslavers would often hire their enslaved persons to work as guides in the cave. Following the Civil War and the abolition of slavery, African Americans who had previously been enslaved still worked as guides in the cave, often working in tandem with Caucasian guides. Despite the discrimination and segregation in other aspects of society, the cave community held African-American guides like Stephen Bishop in high regard due to their expertise in navigating the cave's complex passages. They had a distinctive guiding style, incorporating both storytelling and folklore from their ancestors. The National Park Service, which oversees Mammoth Cave and its surrounding park, celebrates and respects the legacy of African-American guides. Visitors can take tours that highlight the contributions of these guides, and the cave features interpretive displays that honor their history and heritage. In recent years, Mammoth Cave has been recognized as a valuable resource for scientific research, particularly in geology, hydrology, and biology. Researchers have studied the cave's unique ecosystem and variety of rare and endemic species and the park's surface features, such as rivers and forests. Mammoth Cave National Park aims to conserve, safeguard, explain, and analyze the globally renowned biological and geological characteristics and processes linked to the longest cave system known to humankind. The park also seeks to preserve its varied forested karst terrain, the Green and Nolan Rivers, and considerable evidence of human history. Additionally, it strives to offer and support public pleasure, leisure, and learning experiences. Now, let's discuss some of the strange paranormal events that are reported to have happened in Mammoth Cave. Before Mammoth Cave was established as a national park in 1941, paranormal stories were already embedded in the region's history. 
Mammoth Cave is considered one of the, quote, most haunted natural wonders in the world, end quote, with over 150 documented paranormal events. In 1905, legendary cosmic horror author H.P. Lovecraft wrote one of his earliest stories using Mammoth Cave as the setting. In The Beast in the Cave, a tourist separates himself from the group and finds himself stalked by a vicious albino creature. A shadowy realm of ghostly happenings and eerie tales adds mystery to the cave's enigmatic allure. The site may have held spiritual or supernatural significance for the area's Native Americans. In the last 220 years, burials and the remains of desiccated bodies have been identified in the caves. The funerary objects associated with the burials indicate careful attention and respect for the dead. The tools and clothing found on the remains proved that prehistoric peoples were experienced in cave exploration. Today, the park has consulted with tribal partners so that the deceased have a safe and secure resting place in locations away from the cave tours. Credible individuals, including rangers, guides, scientists, all claim to have witnessed paranormal incidents in the cave. Guides Colleen O'Connor Olson and Charles Hanyon have documented many airy tales in their book, Scary Stories of Mammoth Cave. Some visitors have reported hearing screams and strange noises echoing through the winding passageways, while others claim to have seen unexplained apparitions. In addition to ghostly encounters, there have been reports of unexplained sounds of footsteps, chilling drops in temperature, and the appearance of inexplicable lights within the cave system, all contributing to Mammoth Cave's eerie and unsettling ambiance. Legend has it that the cave is home to a vengeful spirit responsible for a murder in the cave's depths. The ghost, known only as Melissa, was a young woman deeply in love with her tutor. When her feelings were not reciprocated, she exacted terrible revenge by leaving him stranded in the cave without light, and he was never seen again. Melissa reportedly confessed to the crime before her death, and her vengeful spirit is said to roam the cave, still searching for her lost love. Some cave guides have reported hearing a woman's voice calling out from the labyrinthine passageways of the cave, along with screams and other eerie sounds. One of the most well-known ghosts associated with Mammoth Cave is that of the previously mentioned Floyd Collins, the most celebrated cave explorer in modern times who met his fate in Sand Cave. Reports of Collins' ghost have been made both in the cave system and at his gravesite. Additionally, the Mammoth Cave Baptist Church, which is now part of the National Park, has been the site of alleged paranormal activity with sightings of mysterious lights in the windows. Some cave guides even allege that Collins has helped prevent others from succumbing to his same fate by catching people when they trip and start to fall. During a routine tour, Charles Hanyon, an aforementioned cave guide, reported that the group's lanterns, cameras, and flashlights all stopped inexplicably working in a chamber. However, the equipment started working again once they left the area. During another tour, a visitor asked Hanyon about a figure standing on a rock that guides usually climb to throw a torch and illuminate the room while they were in the big chief chamber with another guide. Hanyon thought it was his fellow guide, but he was surprised to find him standing at the back of the cave. Later, Hanyon would see the figure himself, noting that it was wearing a hat that was specifically worn by old tour guides. Hanyon mentioned that several other sightings of a figure on the same rock had been reported. In 2014, a Bigfoot hunter and a group of Girl Scouts claimed to witness a large creature leaping onto a raised walkway while hearing its distinct sounds. The group quickly retreated out of fear for their safety. Recently, another alleged encounter with Bigfoot at the park grabbed national headlines. In 2019, while camping at the park, two students from Western Kentucky University were informed by a man that his campsite was destroyed by something. The man fired a gun into the woods claiming he was protecting himself from a charging Bigfoot. Despite this, the students did not observe anything in the direction of the man's shots and departed the park immediately. The following series of encounters are presented in Cave Guides, Colleen O'Connor Olson, and Charles Hanyon's aforementioned book, Scary Stories of Mammoth Cave, paraphrased here. Guide Larry Purcell was walking from his tour group toward a light switch when he encountered an African-American family of four dressed in black and white that he did not recall seeing on the tour. Larry was just a few feet from them, and when he turned on the lights, the family was nowhere to be found. Larry stated, quote, They were as real to me as any other person standing six feet away in the twilight. I've visited the cave many other times, recreating that trip. Using lanterns, torches, flashlights, and carbide lamps, 
I have not been able to recreate even the faintest resemblance of that family. You decide who I saw. End quote. Cave guide Joy Lyons shared her encounter in an area of the cave known as the church. She says, quote, All of a sudden, I felt a very strong, firm push to my right shoulder. It was like a shove, a playful shove. It was hard enough that I stepped forward and said, Cut it out, because I thought it was David, a fellow tour guide. About the time I said cut it out, Red, another tour guide, lit his lantern, and I could see David very obviously silhouetted to the right of the group. He had walked up in the darkness and was standing by that group. I wouldn't say I panicked, but I was definitely upset. I committed the big sin of turning on my flashlight and flashed it everywhere. There was no one behind me, no one on the dirt piles, no one on the hill. This all happened in a couple of seconds. There was no time for anyone to have gone very far. I still ponder it to this day. It was a very real thing I experienced. End quote. Another National Park guide, Carrie Woods, had a similar encounter as Joy Lyons. According to Carrie, we were the first tour to enter the cave at the Methodist Church. While I was at the light switch, I heard footsteps coming toward me from Booth's amphitheater. I tried to ignore it, but it kept getting closer. Then I got shoved on my right shoulder. As I looked back, no one was there, at least no one I could see. Additionally, tour guide Jamie Gray had a similar experience as the others. She says, I was by the light switch in Little Brat. I was standing in the darkness waiting to hear the key phrase to hit the lights back on when all of a sudden a hand reached and grabbed my left forearm. I immediately turned the light on and no one was anywhere around. Unexplained sounds disrupted caver Michael Nardacci and his research partner while they were on a lunch break. They had accompanied two paleontologists and a photographer into Marion Avenue, a cave passage near the Snowball Dining Room, the lunch stop for visitors on the Grand Avenue tour. Michael and his companion separated from the scientists to do historical research. When the pair returned, Michael recounted this story. I just finished a can of fruit cocktail in a Heath bar and was washing it down with a gulp from my canteen when suddenly, from just around a bend in the passage ahead of us, came heart-stopping sounds. Bang! Bang! What the hell was that? We said in tandem. This noise was not produced by a couple of rocks suddenly falling from the ceiling. We know this because in the numbing few minutes after hearing the sounds, we experimented with different shapes and sizes of rocks dropped from varying heights onto packed sediment or bedrock. The sounds we heard were bangs, concentrated, powerful, suggestive of purpose, and perhaps of fury. For several years after the event, whenever we could meet at Cave Research Foundation expeditions, one of us would invariably greet the other by saying, I didn't hear anything that day, did you? And the other would echo, nope, not a thing. Although some park rangers dismiss these stories as folklore, many visitors believe that something eerie and otherworldly lurks in the depths of Mammoth Cave. For those brave enough to explore its dark recesses, the cave provides a thrilling adventure and the potential to encounter the supernatural. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, there is no denying that a trip to Mammoth Cave will leave you with a sense of wonderment and awe at the mysteries beneath the surface of this extraordinary natural wonder. Know before you go. Here's some things to know before visiting Mammoth Cave National Park. Mammoth Cave National Park offers various cave tours catering to different interests, abilities, and age groups. While some cave tours are relatively easy and suitable for all ages and fitness levels, others require more physical exertion and are not recommended for visitors with mobility issues or health concerns. It's important to note that all cave tours in Mammoth Cave need visitors to wear sturdy shoes and bring a light jacket as the temperature inside the cave is a constant 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Visitors should also be prepared to walk, climb stairs, and navigate uneven terrain. Ensuring visitor safety is a top priority at Mammoth Cave National Park. Here are some of the safety rules and guidelines that visitors should follow, according to park personnel. Number one, stay on designated trails. Visitors should stay on designated trails and follow all posted signs and markers. Venturing off trail can be dangerous and may harm the cave's delicate ecosystem. Number two, wear appropriate footwear. The cave floor can be slippery and uneven, so visitors should wear sturdy, comfortable shoes with good traction. Number three, bring appropriate clothing. As stated, the cave's temperature is a constant 54 degrees Fahrenheit, 12 degrees Celsius, so visitors should bring a light jacket or sweater. Number four, 
Follow lighting guidelines. Visitors should not touch or tamper with any lighting fixtures, which can damage the cave and create safety hazards. Number five, avoid touching rock formations. Visitors should not touch or climb on any cave formations, such as stalactites or stalagmites. These formations are delicate and can take thousands of years to form. Number six, do not litter. Visitors should pack out all trash and dispose of it in designated receptacles. Number seven, follow ranger instructions. Visitors should follow any park ranger or staff instructions to the T, including safety and evacuation procedures. By following these safety rules and guidelines, visitors can enjoy the beauty and wonder of Mammoth Cave National Park while minimizing the risk of injury or harm to themselves or the cave's delicate ecosystem. In conclusion, Mammoth Cave is an extraordinary natural wonder with immense cultural, scientific, and ecological importance. The cave system boasts stunning geological formations, a rare ecosystem, and an extensive history, making it a valuable site for researchers, tourists, and conservationists. Mammoth Cave allows visitors to witness the awe-inspiring beauty of nature and perhaps a ghost or two while gaining insights into the complex relationships between geology, biology, and human heritage. Consistent preservation efforts ensure that future generations will cherish this remarkable subterranean realm. Well, friends, there you have it. I've been to Mammoth Cave myself. I highly recommend it if you're in the area. Let me know what you think of this, if you've been there especially. I look forward to your comments, but please keep it friendly and respectful. Until we meet again, be good to yourselves and each other. As for me, I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll see you a little further on down the trail. Be sure and tell your animals I said hi.